Have you or someone you know ever wondered, how do you know whether an effect is fixed or random? We are here to help. If you or someone you know is struggling to understand when to use a fixed or a random effect, please have them watch this video. <laughs> help is on the way. Yeah, it's a totally common thing. Most of my students really struggle to figure out which effects to specify as fixed only and which to specify as random. Understandable, but hey, I'm totally gonna help you. You're a lifesaver, Mr. Dustin Quantsite guy. I'm gonna give you a three-step strategy. Why three? Because that's all you need. The other channels, they might try to tell you to do four or five. No, you don't need four or five. I'm gonna give you three. So let's do this. Strategy number one, look at your data set. Let's step into R, shall we? Isn't it lovely? My R screen. All right, we are here. So yeah, like I said, three strategies, here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to require Flexplot, why? Because we wanna look at the math data set, just to give an example. And the math data set happens to have repeated measures. So let's look at it. Require the tidyverse, why? Oh, we don't need that actually. <laughs> require LME4, why? Because we're gonna fit some mixed models. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say head math n equals 20 and oh dear, my fat head is in the way. So I'm gonna move that down there. And I might have to move it up again. All right, so let's look at our data set now without squishing my head. All right, so if we look at school, that is our cluster variable. And what we are trying to find is we are trying to find variables that vary within cluster. So school does not vary within cluster, obviously because it's the cluster variable. If it's a cluster variable, it will not vary within cluster. Minority status, it seems like it doesn't, but uh-oh, line 18. Those poor minorities, there's only one of them. This is only the first 20 rows, but you get the idea. And I'm doing the first 20 because there were no minorities within the first six rows, so that's why I over here say n equals 20. But look at that, we have minority status varying within cluster. And that makes perfect sense. We would expect schools to have some minorities and some non-minorities. It's not necessarily gonna be the exact same for every school, unless you have like an all black school or an all white school or something like that. Sex, what do we have? We have female, female, male, male. So that is varying within the cluster or within school. Socioeconomic status, that is also varying within the school because every student is gonna have a different socioeconomic status. Likewise with math achievement. Now look at main SES. We got point, negative 0. 0.428, and that is exactly the same. And if I were to go through every student in that school, it would be exactly the same. Why? Because this is the mean socioeconomic status of the school. So that variable cannot be fit as a random effect. Let me repeat that, because that's kind of a big deal. If you have a variable that does not vary within your cluster, you cannot fit it as a fixed effect. Let's think about why that might be. In here, I have created a data set called D where we have 100 IQ scores, mean of, mean of 100, standard deviation of 15, but there is no variability in the gender score. And so now if I were to plot that, we would see that on the x-axis, there's only one score. And on the y-axis, there's lots of scores. But if we were to fit a slope to this, it wouldn't make any sense. There is no slope because gender does not vary across the x-axis. If every single value within a cluster is exactly the same, there is no slope within that cluster. And if there is no slope within that cluster, there cannot be variation across clusters in their slope. So yeah, it makes no sense to do that. So let's look at R and see what happens when we try. So I'm going to fit mod, where I am putting mean SES as a fixed effect here and as a random effect in there. And let's see what happens. Oh, we get boundary singular fit. C is singular. I said earlier you cannot fit it, and I guess that's not entirely true. You can fit it, but the estimates don't make sense. And it's gonna give you that message that says this is singular, and I don't have time to go into what singular means, but just know that it's bad. But instead, if we fit a regular model where we do not model mean SES as a random effect, we get no scary boundary singular fit message. So 
To summarize, if you ever have a variable that does not change within a cluster, do not put it in the random effects area. It don't make no sense. So that's the first step, is to look at your data set. Step number two. Use theory to guide you, young analyst. So what you can do is you can ask yourself, is there a reason to suspect that the slope between my X and my Y does not change no matter what person or school or whatever the cluster variable is. And sometimes theory says these should not vary by cluster. As an example of something that used to be that way is the relationship between calorie consumption and weight gained once you control for metabolism, basically. According to historic nutrition models, it did not matter who you are. Once you control for age, the relationship between calories consumed and weight lost is exactly the same from person to person to person. And so if we were using that theory to guide us, we would make sure that we would fix the slope. But from what I understand, there is recent research that kind of puts that hypothesis into question. I'm not a nutritionist, so I can't tell you the answer, but that would be an example of a situation where theory dictates whether the effect is fixed or random. Or maybe there's another example where you think that the difference between males and females and math scores is going to be the same regardless of whatever school you attend. And that may be true. And if that's true, then you would model it as a fixed effect. On the other hand, maybe there are schools out there that have great tutoring programs specifically tailored to women or to men, whoever is lower in the math scores. In which case, those schools, you would see a smaller difference between the genders than in schools that do not have such a targeted tutoring program. So again, whatever your situation, make sure to use theory to guide your analysis. Most of the time, however, theory is kind of agnostic to whether the slopes should be fixed or random. So what do you do? Number three. Use model comparisons to explicitly test whether those effects should be fixed. Let's jump back in R, shall we? Boy, that was fast and fun. In this example, I am going to fit two models. In the first model, I am allowing socioeconomic status to vary by school. And I am doing that by putting SES within the parentheses. And then in this example, I am saying it does not vary by school. So instead of an SES, I'm putting a one there. And one just tells R that we are allowing the intercepts to freely vary, but not the slopes. And so if I fit both those models and then visualize it using Flexplot, and here I'm doing sample equals 50, which you can do. It's going to give you this weird warning message that says, hey, and by the way, this is just R's message saying, hey, I cannot create 50 distinct symbols to plot your data. Thank you very much. You're asking me to do too much. Is it too much to ask for you to limit the sample size? And that's okay. We don't care about that. We don't care about displaying all the individual data points at this time. What we are really looking for is just the slopes of the lines. And so if I were to move my fat face, whoop, what do we see? We see that the slopes are varying, but they're varying very smallly. Smallly. They vary smallly. Write that down, put it on a t-shirt, y'all. So they vary very little. And so the plot seems to suggest that we're probably better off going with a simpler model where we fix socioeconomic status. But it's always helpful to have some statistics to back up that idea. So I'm going to run this model comparisons and I'm going to move again my face. And what do we have here but some statistics that help us make a decision. So we find that our p-value is 0.104 and if you're using the standard 0.05 cutoff that would suggest that we favor the reduced model because the full model is not statistically significant or statistically different from the reduced model. So we always go with the reduced model. Bayes factor is overwhelmingly favoring the reduced model uh, by a factor of 661. And then the AIC is favoring the full model. So everything but the AIC favors the reduced model. Given that the visuals seem to suggest they're relatively parallel and all the statistics but the AIC favor the reduced model, I'd say we go with the reduced model. So I'm going to look at the estimates of the reduced model and 
that will give me my fixed effects exactly what they are. So 12.65. So that tells us if you are an average, because SES is centered on the mean. So if you are of average socioeconomic status, we expect your math achievement score to be 12.657. And for every standard deviation, I believe these are standard deviation units. For every standard deviation you increase in socioeconomic status, you can expect your math score to go up by about 2.4 points. So back to the original question. How do we figure out whether we should model a variable as a fixed or a random effect? And the answer is simple. All you have to do is one, look at the data set. If the variable does not vary within a cluster, then it has to be fixed. It has to, has to, has to be fixed. If it does vary within cluster, then it might be random. Step two, use theory to guide you. Does theory suggest that it should not vary by cluster? Well, by golly, if theory suggests that, then fix that sucker. And three, use model comparisons to guide you. If you don't have theory and you don't know, then do a statistical test with a full and a reduced model where the only difference between the two is in the reduced model, you fix the effect and in the full model, you allow it to freely vary. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, statistics is, what rhymes with easy? Give me just one second. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Don't let statistics make you uneasy. <laughs> Woo! That was good. All right. I think we've had enough fun for today, so let's go ahead and end it there. See you next time. Peace out.